There is a neighborhood in Winston-Salem whose roots derive from our Moravian heritage, but whose racial tolerance transcended time. It is a place where neighbors were extended family members, and the neighborhood was their individual city. It is a neighborhood where trees lined the streets before the interstate highway was built and took part of their neighborhood. It is a place where recreation abounds, life is still idyllic, and neighborhood still means family. This neighborhood is Bellevue. Around about 1800 when Charles Baggy actually founded the area which was on the on the, on the road all the way going down to uh, South Carolina. And then later on, uh, after he got invited back to Salem, after he went out there, proved that he could be a successful businessman, then James Waugh went in about 1815, 1816, and they named the town Wartown after James Waugh. Basically, it's a part of Wartown. And of course, some of the first blacks there were, were slaves from Salem who moved into Salem in Wartown Street. And they also had some communities on Sunnyside, and Centerville, and of course Salem also. And around the turn of the century, they began to move into Bellevue with the school coming there in 1917. The school actually is older. It was actually built across the tracks in Sunnyside for a while in the 1800s, and then it moved to Bellevue. And with the school coming there and the orphan home coming there and the church coming there, it kind of became a little mini community, a mini town. And then people moved in from you know Salem, Moore, Wahlberg, Georgetown, Davidson County, Moxville, and Davie County, and so forth. The very first families of Bellevue have been those families that came from Salem, the Fries, for example. But others were the Kleinerts, the Scales, the Pickerts, Selfs, Reynolds, Sanders, Reichs, Joiners, Hubbards, Drakes, Grant, Grimes, Yokely, Maston, Stokes, Smith, Greens, Johnson, Hamlin, Wooten, Reed, Morris, Spees, Butler, Harrison, Traham, Lopp, Naylor, Mitchell, Moore, Reese, Foy, Meadows, Ragsdale, Crump, Sells, Selfs, and Mox, and Heinzes. Many of these first families in Bellevue went on to do great things, both in Winston-Salem and around the world. Dr. James Francis Schober was raised in the Walltown area and went on to become the first licensed black doctor in the state of North Carolina, practicing in Wilmington. Addie Morris was born in 1855 and went to work in Africa as a missionary in the late 1870s. Upon her return to the country, Morris returned to Bellevue and was instrumental in organizing the Colored Baptist Orphanage, one of the first in the state. She rests in peace at the Bellevue Cemetery. Reverend Pinckney Joyce built and led the congregation of First Baptist Church, later known as First Walltown Baptist Church, for 47 years. Under his tenure, the church was constructed and flourished. Joyce also trained numerous pastors for service in other congregations around Winston-Salem. The city of Winston-Salem's first black police officer, John Joyce, was from Bellevue. In addition to protecting the city, he also ran the detention center for boys in the old Bellevue school building. After the center closed, the Joyces used this building as their home. People would always divide. Everybody would divide. You, you could hang hogs, so, souls up in the, in the smokehouse and stuff, and they would divide. Come and get, go, to, go out there in the smokehouse and get your soul cat home with you. It would always divide. People would get sick. Mama, you could leave the doors open. Mama would go out the door and go down there and see about that person. See what's happening to the door. Something nobody didn't bother nothing. You didn't, didn't bother, bother a thing. Go see about that person to that person. Get well, feed, clean up house for that person. Everything, it would help one another. And I love that. That was, that was good. Them were good, day, good days then. That was real nice. Well, like I said, I enjoyed the picnics, and then we had little, um, then the, the uh, like at church, our Sunday schools. I mean, our teachers, they would take us to different churches, and, you know, they would teach us how to, you know, act in church and, you know, how to do things in church, like missionaries and ushers and all that. And uh, then and coming up, raising my kids. Well, it's, like I said, we were all together, you know, everybody, all the kids played together, and 
and it was just like just like family. But it's wonderful, it's wonderful time. Wonderful time. industrialization set in in this area with um, textiles, with furniture, and with tobacco in the late 1800s. And so the jobs created opportunities to bring cash into the household as opposed to, uh, let's say, sharecropping or something of that nature. And so with cash, you could do a lot of things. You could buy property, you know, you could buy homes, you could build homes, you could do things, you could open businesses, small businesses. We had about everything in because in the south side we had a hardware store, we had a drug store. I had a barber shop, I had a paint store. We, I mean, this has been really, you know, it's been an independent community from one town on back. You know, we always had everything out here that we needed. And so they were very just among themselves. There wasn't a need for outside help very much. And they didn't go outside very much. And they enjoyed being in Bellevue. And they didn't want to go and see what across town. They could care less. because I'm married since I was small. I played with white kids, lived, you know, around them. And over there, I played because most of the families that moved over here in Bellevue, and we were the last family to move from over there. So I played with white kids and black kids. We'd go swimming for a whole black and white. We'd go out there and dam it up in the water. We'd fill it, we'd call it Muddy Creek, and we'd call it one slippity rock. We, uh, one white boy named it Slippity Rock because it slipped off the rock and fell in the, in the water. And then we'd dam it up, and we started calling it Slippity Rock. Basically, Bellevue has been integrated from day one. There were whites that lived there when, they, when the blacks moved there, and they all basically got along very, very well. Uh, the people tell the story of the blacks telling the story of how they recall their parents or grandparents, even themselves, walking down Walltown Street and meeting Mr. Nissen, who owned the wagon works. He would call them by, by name, and they knew him, and they would say you know, hi to each other and so forth. And for example, again, another example is how Mrs. Sarah Brown, who was the midwife, delivered all the babies, black and white, in Bellevue and Walltown. Everyone knew her. So those ties of, being, of people getting along and cooperation among blacks and whites were always there. And I guess because if your neighbors were white or black and you knew each other in your families for 30, 30, 30 40 years, it wasn't a hard problem getting along. On September 4th, 1958, the rest of Winston-Salem experienced what Bellevue residents had known for decades, that blacks and whites could live, work, and be educated together in harmony and peace. The Bellevue Civic League was instrumental in opening the town's eyes when three black Bellevue children enrolled at the historically white Easton Elementary School. While police officers and more than 30 media representatives looked on, Norma Corley, Richard Cooper, and Rosalind Cooper made history. Well, during the 60s, many people said they were just amazed that problems that went on outside of Bellevue and across the country actually occurred because it was foreign to them. Everyone just got along. It was just nature, common nature, just get along. When the highway came through, it cut the community in half. Next thing you know, tracks and stuff, tearing down stuff, they burning down houses, tearing them up. I would say the worst time in the community was when the highway came through. It's now I-40, basically. But it was early in the 70s and 60s. And people were scared they were going to lose their houses, which most owned their own houses, but they had to move elsewhere. And they didn't want to leave Bellevue. Even now, people hate to leave Bellevue for modern houses. They love living there. And so when the, when the highway came through, the church lost its back lot, so it's now in a smaller lot. And the houses did also. And there were many houses that were torn down. Probably the worst part of that was the cemetery that moved to Walkertown, which meant the people who were buried in the, in the cemetery in Bellevue were moved to Walkertown. And at that point, the community kind of lost its, you know, its ties to its history because you couldn't see the tombstones as easy as you could because the people who were there before, the kids, as kids are going to see the tombstones of their aunts and uncles and cousins and so forth. And so those ties were there. But you have to remember, these things happened at a time when African Americans had little voice about what happens, you know, where the highway would go, uh, where the railroad would go where the next parking lot would go, oftentimes where the shopping center would go. So the, the path of least resistance was the one that developers usually took. It has changed now because we have laws in place to prevent that. But it would be wonderful if the old Bellevue Cemetery was still a part of the Bellevue neighborhood, physically. This 
the recreation center is wonderful. We, we, we grew to it. We were attached to it, but mostly uh, people that's younger than I, they, their children and their grandchildren have raised children to play here. My favorite memories was when they were building this center here for us. You know, we had a center, it was wood and it didn't have much equipment, it was old, you know, but it was home. But everybody, I really, really liked this center. If we didn't have it, a lot of us would just sit home with nothing to do. Here, you do exercises twice a week, and you, most of all, you have a nutritional meal, and you get to communicate with your neighbors and friends. It is easy to see that the Bellevue Recreation Center is a pillar in this community, but another treasure lies just across Moravia Street at First Walltown Baptist Church. As First Baptist Black moved downtown to Winston, the Blacks of Walltown were their own church. So they began to be on the Freeze property on the Brush Harbor on Walltown Street. And this is in the 1800s. As time progressed, they began on their own church officially. The Reverend George was their first pastor in 1900. They then moved to, to, to Bellevue in 1913. And they're still there now. Now they're building a new building. And what's amazing is the chapel, which is the old part of the church itself now, is being tied to the new part. So you see the, the old being joined to the new. And that kind of represents the Bellevue now. Again, early on, even now, the church, the rec center, or the school that was there, which is before the rec center and so forth, and the church, all were one. I mean, the community was all one. Most people went to church there, or the school there, or the center. And so you couldn't differentiate between the, the church, or the center, or the school, or the community. And the church now still has that same kind of mentality, and the center does also, and the community does. They still work to work together. And that kind of sharing of resources still goes on between the buildings, the park, and so forth. The future is, can be positive. The church is building, the church which is still there, First Walltown has made a great commitment to build in the community, and they want to stay there, and the members have the same view of staying in the community. So therefore, if you were there for 70 years or 100 years, you love the community, your house will be the best house, and you'll take care of the community and watch for your neighbors and for the kids, whereas if you aren't from there, you might not care about your flower bed or your grass being too high or et cetera. The families are moving away as people get older or kids move out into different areas and the parents die off or whatever and the houses are sold. So you have more houses, than the rental houses now and the properties go down. But the people still have a love of their community. They still come home for reunions and picnics and so forth. And people are now buying, buying houses and making them you know, more modern, the older houses. And people still are living there. So it still looks pretty good if we can get the houses that are older preserved because again, that's one of the first communities in the area that's a mixed community that's still, uh, still around. I'd like for them to have a nice, clean, decent place for them to play, you know, and to get involved in different activities that they have here at the Recreation Center. They enjoy the uh, basketball, they enjoy uh, the painting, the building bird houses, and the different things that they do here. Okay, I can bring them, my grandchildren here, and then I can pick them up, you know, and it's, I don't have to go nowhere to do that, you know. It makes me feel very proud to live in this neighborhood. This is a really nice neighborhood. As you can see, Bellevue is more than just an ordinary neighborhood. It is a place of pioneers, of visionaries, and of leaders from the past, present, and future.